All right, we're getting started. All right, welcome to the Guitar Breakthrough Masterclass. I'm uh, just going to give it a minute for everybody to join and get settled. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to get started. And, uh, you know, people will just join. That's fine. But uh, just a little, you know, uh, view of what's going to happen. This will last no longer than an hour because I know that anything over an hour will be... Uh, your heads will start to get fried, your fingers will get sore, <clears throat> and, uh, and I'll lose you, all right? So we're going to have three lessons here, right? Three of my most impactful lessons, and this is designed to break you through out of that beginner guitar rut, okay? Um, so we're <clears throat> going to have a short introduction, and then we're going to get right into the nitty gritty. So I hope you've got your guitars, I hope you're ready. Uh, but first of all, who is this masterclass for? All right, so this is designed for late learners, uh, who have came to the guitar game quite late um, and you're stuck at that crossroads, right? You can strum a few chords, you can play a few songs, but you don't know where to go from there. All right, and that is where it, it becomes quite hard, right? Because at first, that guitar, ju guitar journey is a lot of fun. You've seen a lot of progress, you're playing some songs and you're getting that satisfied feeling. But then that becomes not enough. And you want to be able to take it to the next level. And if you're learning online, that becomes very difficult because there's so many options out there, right? And you don't know where to start. Do you start by learning more chords? Do you learn scales? Do you learn modes? Theory? Caged? The list is endless. And it can become very, very confusing. Um, and then you start comparing yourself to other musicians, right? You start comparing yourself to other guitarists that are more ahead of the game than you are. Uh, that are real musicians. <clears throat> now, this is a, a quick question I want to ask you guys. Um, do you feel like a guitar player or a guitar imposter? Imagine that you walked into a room full of musicians. How would you feel? Would you feel like a guitar player? Do you feel like you could keep up? Or would you feel like a guitar imposter that you don't belong? In fact, I've got a little poll. I'm going to try and keep this as interactive as I possibly can, right? So, there you go. If you could answer that question, what do you feel like? A guitar player or a guitar imposter? For me, I know that I definitely did feel like a guitar imposter uh, in the first year of learning. In fact, I remember exactly when I started to feel like that. Uh, again, I was about 17 and I had just started learning guitar and I went into my office, a big call center, and I had my guitar with me and I wanted to show off the few songs that I could play. And I... Um, there was a guy in there, like a seasoned musician. I mean, he was a proper rock star. He wore a leather jacket, he had long hair. He wore sunglasses inside, <laughs> but he could pull it off, you know, that kind of guy. And uh, he picked up the guitar and he starts shredding up and down the fretboard and playing some random but beautiful stuff. And then he gave the guitar back to me and asked me what I could play. And I realized right there and then that I could only play a couple of songs, the few things that I'd learned. And all I could do was copy. I couldn't actually pick up the guitar and play something original. I had no idea how to do that. <clears throat> and since then, I've been on a lifelong mission to figure out how to do that. And I've done it. And that's what I'm trying to teach. That's what I'm trying to give back. Because I learned completely online, right? And I know that it can be very disheartening when you, you, know, you find a teacher online and they start speaking a language that doesn't make any sense. And you can start to feel like you're never going to get there. Like there's this huge mountain to climb. To get to that place as an expressive musician. And you know that's where my teaching philosophy comes in. So guitar made easy isn't because guitar is easy. Right? You'll all know that. A few guys have shouted at me on Facebook because of that. No, guitar isn't easy. But there's an easier way to learn guitar. Right? <clears throat> and there's a way to learn it without getting bogged down by the theory. It's not that I don't teach theory. I do. Uh, but it's putting it in a concise way that's digestible. Because people quit guitar, this is a fun fact, 90% of beginners quit guitar in the beginning stages because they got overwhelmed, right? <clears throat> and that is because you get bogged down by the theory and everything else and you don't know where to go. Now my job is to keep it fun, alright? So learning all those things, learning the cage system, learning how to play lead, learning major and minor pentatonic, but doing it in a way that is fun and enjoyable and a nice, practical, easy piece of music for you to play. 
Anyways, I feel like I'm rabbiting on, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to learn three pieces of music again that are designed to break it out of the beginner phase. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to break away from those open chords. All right, and start playing it up and down the neck using triads in the caged system. And again, this is without getting too overwhelmed or doing anything that is too difficult. We're then going to look at how you can add some flair to your open chords by making them sound in a lot more ambient. And again, being able to play up and down the fretboard. And this is particularly useful if you want to play with another musician. Um, <clears throat> and then believe it or not, the third thing that we're going to learn, we're actually going to learn how to play by ear. All right, so that if you walk into uh, a jamming situation with other musicians or simply you want to play over a backing track or uh, along with one of your favorite songs, you'll be able to pick up by ear, find the scale and play a few licks. All right, so we're going to learn all of that in today's lesson. <clears throat> and then after that, if you stick with me, um, I'm going to... Uh, demonstrate how I achieve real results with a multitude of students from all around the world, all right, and show you exactly how I work with students uh, who have been stuck in the same place for a long time, and we take them to the next level in a very short space of time, okay, so I'm going to show you how we do that, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to work with me at the end, all right, I've got a few applications, a friend that wants to take their learning further, You'll get a chance to do that at the end of the call. I'm also going to answer any questions you have about any of this. So there's a Q&A part. Uh, so make sure you, you save any questions and you ask me at the end. And lastly, for anybody who sticks with it for the whole call, as a thank you, I'm going to give you a gift. And that's not a crappy PDF or anything like that. I'm going to give you three mini courses uh, as a thank you for, for sticking with me through the webinar. All right. Anyways, let's get right into it, shall we? So... Hands up if you've got your guitar, if you're ready. All right, cool. And I see we've got 81% guitar imposters in the room. I've been there. Let's hope you feel a little bit differently by the end of this session. All right, cool. We're good to go, guys. <clears throat> so let's go on with the lesson. Okay, so the first exercise, we're going to start how to learn how to play chords up and down the fretboard using triads. So we're going to play an E chord and we're going to do this. You probably expected me to do this, right? But we're going to play an E chord here. So I want you to take your index finger, I'm just going to move this down a little bit more. There we go. I want you to take your index finger on the 5th fret in the B string, your middle finger on the 6th fret in the G, and your 3rd finger on the D. Okay, and we can play every string there from the A string. All right, lovely. <clears throat> now, the cool thing about this, right, is you can actually play every string just like you can with an A chord. Because we're playing in the key of A, and all we need to do is play those A and E strings. Now, this is a triad taken out of the bigger A bar chord here, right? We're just playing three of those notes. But you don't need to know that, right? Just do this. Alright, get your fingers settled into that position. Lovely. And again, I like to keep my thumb over here in the low E string to mute it, so that I can bash all the strings without having to think about getting that low E. But uh, you can just try and aim and not get it if that's too hard. Okay? Right, so once we've got that, I want us to move that chord up to the 8th, 9th and 10th fret. Alright, and that becomes a C chord. This is a C triad. And again, we can play all of those strings. And it still sounds pretty cool. Alright, so we've got an A, a C. And then if we move this shape down to the 1st, 2nd and 3rd fret, again playing everything from the A string. We've got an F triad with those open strings. We move it up to the 3rd, 4th and 5th fret. And we've got a G chord, a G triad with those strings. And then back to A. Alright, so just a quick recap before we go any further, right? A, over here, 5, 6 and 7 from the B. C. And again, guys, if you've got any questions about any of this, save them up and ask them at the end, and I'll make sure I go over it for you, okay? And then we're going to come back down. One, two, and three. F. 
3, 4 and 5, that's just got our G and back to A. Right, and then we can start strumming that, okay? Now we can take any strumming pattern really, right? I'll probably do... I don't want to think about too much about this, right? You can do anything, anything that feels comfortable for you, right? What I love about this, right, is the fact that we're playing four chords, basically. We're playing an A, a C, an F, and a G, and we don't need to take our fingers off the fretboard. We can just keep the same shape and move up and down. All right, and I never knew this as a beginner, right? I think this is pretty cool. Because MD that's a beginner and sees you doing this will probably think you're pretty advanced, right? Because you're moving up and down the fretboard, and it sounds lovely with those open strings. Now, we can make that even cooler by adding in our pinky here, all right? We can add it in any string on the fifth fret, or sorry, the seventh fret, and move it around, all right? I can add it to the E string, the B string, or the G string to add a few embellishments there. Now, don't worry if you can't get your pinky involved. I know when I was a beginner, uh, I struggled to get my pinky to do anything, uh, but um, you can try again, and you can, you can come up with some cool stuff, like... So that's the first exercise. Give me a hands up if you enjoyed that, if you liked that, if that was if that was fun. Alright, good. <clears throat> awesome. Alrighty. Good. Okay, so again what first of all we've learned how we can take our open chords and we can fire up and down the neck and do something cool, right? And it's doing things like this that bring you out of that standard strumming that can become a bit tedious over time. And practicing things like that, they just make things a bit more fun, right? And it makes guitar playing a joy, all right? We can mix it up. So we've got tons of stuff like this. Um, I had to think about what I was going to pick for this lesson, all right? But the next one we're going to look at is a little bit similar, okay? Um, it's how we can take any open chords, right? Minor or major chords, and then do something really cool with it, right? So I want you to picture that you have just uh, went into, you've been into a room, there's another musician there playing, and he's going to play some chords. And then you need to play something alongside them. Okay, so what I want you to do, just to prove how easy this is, right, I want you to give me in the comments a three or four chord progression, right? I mean, nothing jazzy, right? Just major or minor chords. It can be G, C, D, whatever it is. Um, start giving me a chord progression, just three or four chords, and I'm going to pick one, and I'm going to demonstrate this for you, okay? So, <clears throat> on you go. I'm waiting. Okay, A, D, and E. That's the first one. Okay, we've got lots coming up, right? <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick with, uh, I'm going to take a four chord progression. G, C, D, A minor. That's lovely. Okay, so, G, C, D, A minor. All right. So imagine your friend is playing this G, C, D, A minor. Now, to do this trick, you first of all need to know the notes on the top string. Okay, now don't worry if you don't know that right now. I'm going to explain it briefly. Um, there's 12 notes in the fretboard. All right, only 12 notes. There's only 12 notes in Western music. A through to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Of course, that's only seven, right? But five of them have sharps. Which brings us to 12. Not doing anything with my fingers, right? So we get 12 notes in the fretboard. The only two notes that don't have sharps are B and E. So just remember the word B. B, E. And everything else has sharps. Now, what that means is if you've got... When you start with the note, right? We've got the E note here, right? That's the E string. And every fret... Uh, every time we go up a fret, we go to the next note. So E. E doesn't have a sharp, so we've got F. F sharp, 
G, G sharp, G, and then we don't have an H, unfortunately. I'd love an H, but we don't. We go right back to A, okay? And that's A for Apple. I know a lot of, especially Americans, don't know if I'm playing, if I'm saying A or E, but A for Apple, okay? So E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A again. A sharp, B. B doesn't have a sharp, so we go right to C. C sharp, D, D sharp, and we're back to E again. So E, 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 E. All right, we're at the next octave, the, the next higher frequency of that note. All right, so we've got 12 notes in the fretboard. I know that uh, by, uh, we've got the, what's our chord? G, C, D, A minor, right? So all I need to do is find those notes in the top strings. So I've got G here on the third fret. Okay. I've got C here on the eighth fret. I've got D on the tenth fret. And I've got A on the fifth fret. G, C, D, A. So that'd be three, eight, ten, five. Now this is where it gets good, right? So to play a major or minor chord using something called thirds. Now, you don't need to know anything about that, right? This is what we're doing. But all you need to know is the shapes. We're taking two notes from the chord, okay? Take the G note, and then we take the next note, which is four strings down in the G string. Right? And this is the major shape, right? And it's the same for every chord. G, okay? So I want you to do that, take your third finger, and you can play like this if you like, whatever finger is more comfortable for you. So we've got three and four, the low E string and the G string. That's our G chord. Now if I wanted to play a G minor, all I would do is move that back to the same fret. Okay, so that's the major shape, and that's the minor shape. That's all you need to know, major, minor, major, minor. Now, if I apply that to the rest of the chords we see there, that was a G. We had a C, that was in the 8th fret, I make the major shape, okay, which would be A on the low E, 9 on the, the G. I move that up to the 10th fret for the D, make the major shape. And then I come back to A and we've got an A minor, so we make the minor shape. Okay, so we've got G, C, D, A minor. Just imagine your buddy's playing. And you. All right, or you could be a bit more creative with it. You could maybe. That would also work if you were making a song, right, and you wanted a verse and a chorus. That could be the verse. Chorus. Now we can take that one step further guys, right? Um, we can do the same thing on the A string. Okay, and we work out the notes the same way. A, A sharp, B, B doesn't have a sharp, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. Okay, that would be my G there. And instead of making that shape, I make this shape. Okay, on the B string, because the B string is tuned a little bit differently. All right, so we've got G and 12 on the B, and that's my G now. If I want to make play a G minor, I would move that one back. All right, G, G minor, G, G minor. So I've got G in the 10th fret. And then we move over next for C. So C's in the third fret, and again, I make the major shape. I move that up two frets to D. And then lastly, we've got A, we could do here, um, on the 12th fret, or we could just do this. No, we couldn't actually, that wouldn't work. Um, oh, sorry, we're at E minor, aren't we? So it'd be less. Okay, so E's in the 12th fret. 
in the 13th fret in the, the B. So again, that would be G, C, D, A minor. And that's lovely. That gives you another different, a different voicing, right? So we would have G, C, D, A minor, and then uh, G, C, D, A minor. All right. An interesting chord progression, actually. Really nice. So well done for that. Okay, so did that make sense for everybody? Just put your hands up. Did you enjoy that? Is that a good one? Um, well, we go into the next lesson. Now, this is definitely the juiciest lesson, I would say. Um, and, you know, it's a big... Uh, this was a big aha. I know I'm going a little bit blurry here. Here we go. This is a big aha moment for me. So this uh, is how you're going to be able to go into any room, any situation, or even if you're just in your own room, and you've got uh, some piece of uh, music, a piece of music playing, and you're going to be able to play over it right away. Okay, so there's a few different things, a few different techniques I'm going to show you here. So make sure you pay attention. Uh, and again, I'm going to get you involved in this one as well. All right. So again, the only thing we really need to know is the notes on the fretboard, the top string. I keep on getting out of focus, guys. I'm sorry. So just imagine you've got a piece of music that's playing, right? And luckily enough, I've got a few loops here that are playing. That are ready for you. I'm going to play a piece of music <clears throat> and all you need to do right is go along the top string and find out what note resonates the most with the piece of music that's playing all right. Now the note, the fact, here we go, get out of focus, it's all right you don't need to see me for this part anyway right but the note has to resonate with every chord with the whole, um, with all the strumming okay it has to Resonate with every chord that's in the uh, that's in the piece. Okay, so I'm going to just zoom back in here, right? Because we're getting better luck there. All right. So I'm going to play this piece of music. <clears throat> now, first of all, can you hear that? Hands up if you can hear that. All right. Cool. Now, all I want you to do now, right, is go up the fretboard and figure out the note. That doesn't work. No. No. All right, and what I want you to do is either tell me what note or what fret. If you don't know the notes, just tell me what fret on the top string resonates most. All right? With what you hear there. Okay, so I Okay, we've got C, C, A, A, eighth fret. Okay. C, that's the 8th fret on there in the C, okay. Okay, so so far we've got a few people seeing C, a few people seeing A, right? 7th fret, B. So guys, A, okay. So the correct answer <coughs> is A. Okay, now, technically it could be C. Uh, because C and A actually share the same notes. Okay, but um, this, is, this is A. Okay, this is A. Um, and where we need to go from there, right? That gives us a starting point. Okay, now the next thing we need to know is the pentatonic scale. And I'm going to go over that in just a second. But first of all, before we do that, we need to figure out if it's a minor or a major chord. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up for this. So the best way to figure out if it's a minor or major chord, or a minor or major chord progression, sorry, is, well, first of all, a minor song's, you know, kind of sad or melancholy, and, you know, it, it could be bluesy as well. A major song is more country, more happy, right? So the best way, and this is my technique, right? This is proven to work. All you need to do is sing I Won the Lottery across the, uh, along with the song. 
And I'll tell you very quickly if it's a minor, major or minor song. So, try it. I won the lottery. What up here? I won the lottery. I... I didn't win the lottery. I'm skinned. Hmm. <laughs> right, okay, so you get what I mean. Um, that tells you right away that it's not a happy song. Okay, it's not a major song, right? So it's minor. So what do we do? <clears throat> we can then play minor pentatonic. So we've got our note here, right? Right, and if anybody doesn't know, I'm going to show you this shape. Okay, we've got five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. Right, five eight five seven five seven five seven five eight five eight. But what if you don't get that right away, right? We're gonna to get to that. Okay, so it works. Now important thing to know that's an A note, that's a root note. That's a root note there again on the seventh fret and the D string. Also here on the fifth fret. Okay, now, if the, if the answer was B, right, uh, and it was the 7th fret, that would work exactly the same. Alright, but we've got the A note and we can just go right into that scale and that's going to work. Okay, so we've got that, so what do we do after that, right? How do we start creating some music? We've got our scale, we know what key we're playing in, so what do we do after there? So, what I like to teach, right, is we start very simple. We start with uh, four notes from that scale, right? We're going to start with four, uh, sorry, five and seven, five, seven on the D and the G. And remember, our root note's there on the seventh fret, right? And we just make a couple of easy licks. So let's just say five, seven, seven, five, seven on the G, five, seven on the D, seven, five, seven. And then we just start to get creative with that. great music right but that is where we start and again guys I'm kind of going to brush over this quickly but try to get as, as much as what I do uh, with my students across to you as best I can you build up as much muscle memory with those notes as you can all right you just practice with that practice with four notes and then branch out uh, into other notes so after you've done that you want to start adding in hammer-ons and pull-offs little bend Gives you more ways to be expressive. Alright. And then the next level up from that is to then start adding more notes. You can add in the rest of the pentatonic. You can slide up and start to use shape 2, alright, which would mean taking from the G string on 7, sliding up to 9. 8, 10 in the B, 8, 10 in the high E. Myself here and I'm, I'm screwing up all right I need to look up here so <clears throat> after you've done that right you've, you've learned how to what key it's in you've learned how to build some muscle memory over the pentatonic scale uh, but you still want some some other things for your expression right we don't want to end there because the pentatonic scale is only five notes out of the seven note minor scale or minor major scale okay now we can add in the other two notes just here in the bottom string, the bottom two strings, we could, instead of going 
5 8, we could go 5 7 8, or 8 7 5. And then in the B string, 8 6 5. Alright. And that adds in those extra cool, more colourful notes. We get 7 5 4 here as well. And let's see how that sounds. You can see that adds a lot more as well, um, if you add in those notes. Alright, now, once you've built up the muscle memory, and that's the thing, you need to build up the technique, you need to build the muscle memory, your fingers need to be fluent, alright, repetition, 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 until you've got all those movements programmed into your hand. <clears throat> and then once you do, you're able to then become expressive, and you can start to think about what you're going to play before you play it. And the more you do that, the more you get used to it, the more you start, um, you can understand what note comes next, all right? You can know, you know where to go, and that comes with practice. And once you do, you can start thinking things and then playing them. Until you screw up, right? Uh, which happens eventually, <clears throat> especially if you're talking to a lot of people that are staring at you. So if we were wanting to play something more major, right, in a happier scenario, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I want you guys to tell me exactly what key I'm playing in, okay? So again, go along the top string and figure out what note I'm playing in, right? What number? There we go. You can hear it's a major song, I'm happy. Don't worry, you guys will have a recording to watch this, so you can go over it more in depth. I won the lottery. I won the lottery. More volume, okay, yep, yeah, I can do that. Hold on. Is that better? Okay. I won the lottery. I'm going to buy more guitars with my lottery. A major, right? Okay, I've got A, B, C, F sharp A and B. You can only pick one, man. That's cheating. <laughs> oh, you tell me the chords. Sorry. All right. Okay. We got lots of different answers here, right? Now we're actually playing A again, right? And I did this deliberately because we played A minor. So what do we do? Doesn't work, right? <clears throat> that doesn't work. What we need to do is play A major pentatonic. So how do we do that? Well, we found the A note. All we need to do, right? Now pay attention to this. And again, you guys are going to have a recording of this, right? I'm going to let you, you watch it. So if you don't get this right now, hopefully it will sink in. All you need to do is move this note three notes back. Okay? Okay, we're back to two. We're back in the second fret. Okay, so we go from here to here and we play the same shape. Now you might be asking me, Tony, well, if we play that shape here, aren't we playing F sharp minor pentatonic? Yes, but every major has its minor 
or his evil twin, right? Ev within every major pentatonic is a minor pentatonic in the opposite, all right? There's always an opposite, a made a relative in relative major and minor, but you don't need to know that, right? Um, right now. So if I play here, the only thing that I need to do differently to make it not F sharp minor and A major is focus on the A note, alright? When I focus on my root, the A is there, we know that, we know the A is here. The A is also here on the second fret in the G string. So if I play the pentatonic shape. But instead of starting here, I start here. It becomes a happy pentatonic, a major pentatonic. And that works. Right? <clears throat> and again, what I would do is I would start with the... Uh, those two notes, oh, there's four notes, sorry, in the middle of the guitar, all right, two, four, uh, this time it's two, four, two, four, and we start here, right, this is the root note here, so I want, instead of aiming for here, I'm going to focus on here, okay, like four, two, on the G, four on the D, back to two, and just practice with that. Add then hammer-ons. The extension. The added notes for the major. guys right i've obviously practiced this a lot and this is what you need to build up you need to build up the muscle memory you need to build up the technique uh, by taking those steps all right learn the scale learn the key build up muscle memory in the pentatonic scale all right starting with a couple of notes and then branching out and then over time you get to a point where again that stuff becomes second nature the more repetition you do uh the quicker that happens all right, so <clears throat> there's a lot going on in those lessons, I know. I mean, that was three really packed lessons, right? So, and obviously in the space of an hour, it's hard to kind of digest everything. So again, for everybody here, I'm going to make sure that you get uh, a copy of this, okay? So don't worry if, I, if some of it went over your head. Um, now, I'd like to bring on to the next part, right, guys? I'd first like to ask you guys a question. Um, what is the question, right? So as an online guitarist, what would you say has held you back? <clears throat> what would you say has been your biggest obstacle? Uh, I've actually got a poll here, right? So um, let's, guitar obstacles, okay? Now there might be something else here, right? But out of these options, what would you say has been the biggest thing? Um, <clears throat> having no feedback, having no structure, having too many options online and having no motivation, right? Those are big, Things and I'm just taking them out of you know my experience with the students that I have and from my own personal experience. <clears throat> All right, so we've got quite a lot coming in. No structure seems to be a sheer winner. Seems like everybody's motivated. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna. Yeah, so no structure has got 55%, no feedback, 18%, and too many options online is 26%. No motivation is 0%, so I'm, I'm so glad you guys are all motivated. That's great. I mean, you're here, and that's a big sign that you are motivated, right? So I'm going to end this now. Um, now, they are the big things, right, with online learning. You've got no structure, no feedback. No contact with someone as well, uh, because when you're learning online, you don't get to ask questions, right? Uh, and how many times have you been in that situation where you are, you're watching a video, like maybe you're watching this, <laughs> and you're asking, why is he doing that? Why, uh, why does that work? Why does that not work? Why are you playing those notes? Um, 
what did you actually play there? Can you show me again? You can't do any of that. And that is uh, a big thing that's missing. You obviously can't get any feedback either. You can't get anybody telling you, you know, you're, you're not doing that quite right or you're doing that really well. And also someone to give you a pat on the back to say, you know, you're doing really good. Keep on going. You get that missing. Um, <clears throat> and obviously there's no personalization as well. I don't know about you, but if I take any online courses normally, I don't normally finish them because they're not personalized to me. There's no... Um, there's some stuff I like, some stuff I don't, some stuff's too easy, some stuff's too hard, and you end up just doing a couple of lessons and not doing not doing anything else, right? Does that resonate with any of you? Does that make sense, yeah? All right, so um, <clears throat> what I've tried to do is I've tried to solve all of those problems uh, with my teaching system. So I'm going to share that with you very briefly, and again, if you want to find out more, you can. If not, no strings attached, you don't need to. Um, but I'm going to show with you, I'm going to show you very briefly exactly how I achieve all of those things and how I really help guys and girls from all over the world uh, achieve something they've wanted to do for a long time in a very few months. So people that have been stuck in the same place for years, stuck, uh, you know, at the same level, the beginner phase, and haven't been able to break out of that, how I can get them there within a couple of months. And um, everybody's got different goals, whether it's to play in front of family or friends without feeling you know, ashamed or embarrassed, or whether that's playing an open mic night, or whether that's um, you know, just being able to pick up the guitar and play and express yourself and not have to copy stuff anymore and feel more confident as a guitar player and not a guitar imposter. <clears throat> this is what I do, all right? So I'm gonna show you very briefly, and then I'm gonna answer any of your questions, okay? So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen and show you how, where the magic happens. All right, here we are. <clears throat> so this is my site, this is my community site. This is where all the members of my private program are. This is where we all hang out, right? And um, I've just happened to land on my testimonial page, right? Where um, I've got students that are on my program, that have been on my program, and they talk about um, the, what they've achieved so far. So we've got David here, um he's only been on for six weeks uh but he has he's enjoyed the structure the support he's helped convert guitar concepts into reality and brought his playing on a lot in a very short space of time all right for ideal for anyone who's got a busy family work-life balance chad here he's uh my moderator actually he's been he finished in november <clears throat> um and he was the same old strumming pattern no originality all the songs he played were the same he bounced around from YouTube video to YouTube video and get nowhere fast. And what he learned from me, he learned scales, theory, caged, triads, um, with practical techniques. Now he can sit down and play the guitar. I mean, actually play it. All right. So Chad is awesome. He's an awesome guy. There's Chad right there. All right. And we got a few guys, uh, again, with different stories. We got David here. This is the last one, guys, right? David. A fun and focused approach to learning with the right balance between practical and theory, getting the right information at the right time. Enjoy the discipline of having to post weekly videos. I'll get into that in a second. And in addition, it's opened them up to a wider community of people. And they'll all talk about that. All my, my students talk about the... Uh, in fact, my student last week told me that uh, when I talk about this, I completely undersell this aspect, <clears throat> which is the community. Now, when you come onto my program, you get this for life, this, this whole thing. And this is not a community like anything else that I've ever seen. I've got guys from all around the world, America, Canada, Europe, uh, whatever, right? And they're all late learners that, again, have uh, struggled to break through the beginner phase in guitar. And we actually get to know each other, right? You get to know these guys because we have a weekly live Zoom call, all right, which is... Again, nothing like you'd see in a Facebook group, actually. It's normally a little lesson by me, and everybody pitches in uh, what they are, what they're going through. <clears throat> like last week, we had Ricardo here, who he had, uh, he was struggling with uh, certain chord changes. And rather than me being a teacher and telling him what to do, you've got guys that were there where he was a month or two ago, and that can be a lot more motivating, a lot better um, to hear from someone that's been where you are just a few months ago. So you get to know people, you actually get to be friends with people on here, and that's great because. <clears throat> it's such an inspiring thing, especially if you want to get used to playing in front of people. Posting videos and things is something we do regularly, so we've got challenges and 
and things like that. So if they post up progress videos of themselves, anything that they've been working on, <clears throat> and you get to, it's a great, it's a safe space. You know, if you're worried about playing an open mic or playing in front of people, this is a great way to do that and get positive feedback in a positive space. All right, so um, we've got this. This is also where I hold all my courses and my lessons, and this is where I hold my private, my private calls and things as well. <clears throat> so all of this is here. And again, I know I'm brushing over this quite quickly. Um, but that isn't what the program actually is. What we do, right, imagine if you, if you signed up with me, if you take the application that I'm going to give you here and you book a call with me, <clears throat> what happens is we have a chat before you pay any money or anything like that. Uh, and I find out about you as a guitarist. And I'll ask you questions. Where you are, what do you want to achieve as a guitar player? And then we set out a plan. Okay, and we figure out how we're going to do that. And every single week, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a couple of lessons to do that are just outside your comfort zone, that are in the direction of where you want to go. And every week, you need to upload your videos to me. And that's the secret sauce. Because if you're in a position right now where you're practicing the same thing every single day, that's not really getting you anywhere. Every single week, you're going to be practicing new stuff that's exciting, that's fun, and is, again, it's just outside your comfort zone. It's going to be pushing you uh, as a guitar player. And every week you need to upload that to me. And then every week we have a live session, all right? A live guitar lesson where I'm able to tell you, listen, you did this great. You need a little work in this. We get the guitars up. We have a guitar lesson. And again, you're able to ask me questions and I'm able to give you that important feedback that's vital for you to improve as a guitar player. <clears throat> now we do that every single week, all right? Every week we've got our live calls. You've also got the live calls with the group every week. And that is how you get from point A to point B in a fast, uh, a fast time. Because we've got structure, you've got personalization, you've got feedback, you're able to ask questions. Uh, but I'm not going to uh, give you an illusion, guys. This only works for people who are actually committed, right? You need to commit and invest in yourself, all right? Because you need to show up every week. And as long as you do that, you'll get the results, <clears throat> all right? So... Uh, so that is it. That is my big program. And honestly, I don't see anything like this else online because I'm actually there every week with you. We're actually having one-on-one -on -one contact. And I don't see many guitar teachers doing that because it's it's time, right? But at the end of the day, that's what's needed to really get students on. And I love doing it. So um, if you're interested, what I'm going to do... <clears throat> now, I've only got... Uh, the calendar's only open for this. How much time a week do you need to commit? Okay, that's a good question. Now, the... Obviously, if you do, I do six months, I do 12 weeks, there's different amount of time you can do it for, right? And obviously, people are busy, right? A lot of the guys I teach have got businesses, the, you know, they get golf tournaments, whatever it is. <clears throat> now, if that's the case, I, you don't need to take the weeks consecutively, right? You can take weeks off whenever you like. You always get what you pay for. So if you get 12 weeks and you don't, uh, you don't, you take it over 20 weeks, that is still fine. <clears throat> um, and... I, again, this program is completely personalized. So if you were a really busy person, I would make sure that the lessons and the structure suited your lifestyle, okay? Um, so if one week you said, Tony, that was too many, too many lessons, then we'll, we'll dial it down a bit um, and take it from there. So I hope that answers your question. Does the 12-week program cover any personal... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 12-week program is in-person lessons. So... We, uh, we have a, a lesson every every single week, a live session, all right? So uh, we, I give you the, the, normally there's a recording that you need to do, so your homework, you get that, that's a recorded piece of content, so that you can work in it, um, and you upload that, and then every week we, uh, we go over that, and I'm able to give you the feedback on that, and then answer any questions, and we get the guitars up, and we go back and forth like that. So it's a very efficient way of learning. I don't know if any of you have had the experience where even in an in-person teaching thing, you turn up and your teacher asks you, what do you want to learn today, right? And again, you're lacking that structure. This is a structured plan. You're getting the, the lesson, the online lesson, and then you're getting the in-person contact, the feedback, the questions, the next lesson, and it takes on from there. So it's very efficient, um, and it's very planned and structured. And it's uh, what you're seeing right now is something that's been chopped and changed a million times uh, to get the the perfect system. All right. So thank you so much. I'm getting a lot of uh, people uh, happy. So we can't start for six weeks to a photo safari. That sounds amazing. 
And so basically, it's all down to availability with me. I can only work with so many people at the one time. So as soon as I've got more space open, I'll be doing it again. Um, the time change in the US and EST, and I'm an early, early to bed, early to rise kind of guy. Well, <clears throat> I do have a lot. Actually, most of my students are in the US. <laughs> all right, so I'm used to that. And again, I'm very flexible. So if the times don't suit you at first, all you need to do is tell me. And I will, I'll, I'll be flexible. I'll arrange. I've got a lot of, uh, I basically record content. I've got, I do, I've got a guitar school three nights of the week, and this is what I do. So I'm very able to be flexible with people. All right. Um, what else do we have? How soon, Tony? Do you fathom what level us learners are at? How soon do I fathom what level the learners are at? <clears throat> well, normally, again, it's hard to teach like this, right? Where you've got a whole group of people. Well, that's what learning online is. And that's what's hard about it because so many people are just starting. They've been there for a while. They've got intermediates. So the first week, at our, our call, I gauge where you're at. And the first week, I give you lessons that are to challenge you. And I can tell after that first week where you are, what you need help with. And I make sure that your lessons are appropriate so that they're always um, just outside your comfort zone. All right. But if you were a beginner, for example, and you couldn't really strum chords yet, you couldn't chord change, then we'd work on that. All right. We'd work on getting your chords good, getting your chords clean, get changing chords, all those kind of things before we moved on to anything more difficult. All right. So the one in one sessions, <clears throat> they can be anything between 15 minutes and half an hour normally. All right. Uh, but generally, I don't have a time limit on them. We, I'm on the call until we've done what we need to do. There's been times when I've been on the call for an hour. <laughs> All right, but I'm not going to advertise that. But um, it really depends on, on what we're doing. But the um, and we, I've got a few of my students on here. We've got uh, Ricardo. How you doing, Ricardo? Good to see you here. Um, I hope that answers your question, Dave. Now, again, if you book, book a call with me, uh, you're not tied into anything right away. You're, you're able to ask all these questions before you make any kind of investment, all right? Because we need to make sure that it's the right fit for, for both of us. All right, so that's a sign, right? My camera, <laughs> I didn't know how long it would have, right? Uh, I knew it would have longer than an hour, but that's it. Uh, it's off. So I am think I'm going to wrap it up, guys, all right? Um, thank you so much for coming. You know, again, this isn't a, 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 something that, just to sell you at the end. You know, I wanted to give as much value as possible in this um obviously you've got all my youtube lessons there as well um and and yeah um i'm just very grateful that you all turned up it's amazing to, to to connect with so many people from across the world and and do guitar all right guys so whatever you do uh, keep on jamming and have a great day and i'll see you soon